What have I been reading the last couple of weeks? I'm going to talk about the books I've finished, and then I'm going to talk about books I'm reading, and then I'm going to do a book haul, but for RPG adventures, because I've recently got a, a bunch of those. I have finished two non-fiction books, which I won't detail here, uh, but that's been part of a productive couple of weeks of reading. I finished also The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, which I've put a review up for. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it at, at one level a lot. Um, I don't know how far it's going to you know, last into the all-time annals. We'll see in 10 years. Uh, but I thought the character work was very good. In a way, there wasn't very much else. You know, There wasn't much in the way of... Uh, world building comparatively there certainly wasn't much in the way of plot in this one but I enjoyed it you know it, it was good fun it wasn't the worst way to spend my time uh, that was a viewer request from my 100 subs and it was a good good recommendation I've also finished it part of my buddy read for the month book one of this so this is book of the new sun volume one shadow and claw and this includes the first two books or, or volumes confusingly of the book of the new sun by Gene Wolfe and I've finished the shadow of the torturer which was, I mean, it's very Gene Wolfe from the one book I've read of his. He's a very confusing, difficult, uh, cerebral, angular author. And, and there's more definitely that going on here in Shadow of the Torturer. I enjoyed it immensely. I thought it was very clever, very stimulating, challenging. Uh, I came away with lots of questions. There was a, maybe just about the pacing issues got to me in the end. And by pacing issues, I don't really mean, oh, he doesn't know how to pace a book. What I mean is that he was intentionally doing things to his pace and plot which were meant to go against the grain. They're meant to push back against what you were requiring. They're meant to challenge you. Um, and that I was mostly have to be patient with that and I mostly enjoyed it and was stimulated by it. But perhaps I, it began to grind just a little bit. Uh, I'll talk about that more in a, a review of the whole of this volume. I have started on that note, Claw of the Conciliator, which uh, so far, I mean, I'm, I'm only two chapters into that I think uh, I, I imagine I'll get through a lot of that this week is has been an interesting read so far can't really say much after two chapters uh, but yes it's still not too late to join in uh, if you are interested get a copy and start reading I've also been reading the last couple of weeks I think I've read this on and off for the last month or so with with my family but I got this lovely edition of the Bromeliad by Terry Pratchett which is a trilogy of short kind of middle grade-ish books I guess uh, my kids are younger than that but it's n there's nothing inappropriate really Truckers is what we're on at the moment we are about halfway through and that's going really well I have never read these before I've read some of the Johnny books and I've read all every Discworld book so I've read the Discworld YA but I haven't read his his other kind of middle grade and YA and um, it's, it's immense fun and I'll probably do a review when the time comes though that might be honestly when We've read all of them, which may be some time. You know, it depends on how often a week we all get to sit down to read together and so on. I've started on a similar note to Book of the New Sun. This is not a priority read, but I have read a couple of chapters of Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie, just because I, I was enjoying the characters. And one thing about enjoying something in a world is that even if it's not the best thing ever, you want to inhabit it more. I think that's part of the genius of good fantasy, particularly. Um, and so yeah, I've enjoyed that so far. I don't know what the pace will be on that because there are other priority books ahead of it. So probably it's going to be bobbling along, probably cheerfully, or it's going to get wrecked in one day of, uh, of, of a bit of a reading sprint. But we'll see. That is a background book. The other priority book for this month at this point, I probably will try to get one other book in there. Uh, but given I've got Claw of the Conciliator and Before They Are Hanged, uh, that's maybe, well, particularly Claw of the Conciliator, that's really enough. But here, this is long, so it might well take up more time and therefore block something else coming into the, the TBR. Hawkmoon, History of the Rune Staff, the first of the two Hawkmoon collections by Michael Moorcock. This is, uh, I was going to say, yeah, there's the Rune Staff history and there's Count Brass, which is three short books. This is four short books. As you can see, it's um, not short in itself, but it's 600 pages. It's not crazy. 150 pages, 160 pages each. And I've read uh, several chapters of this, again, two or three. And it's, wow. I'll talk about this more when I review it because it'll be an Appendix N review. Uh, but Moorcock is in incredible at invention. He feels very bright and vibrant and modern, as bad a term as that sometimes is. 
in terms of his invention, his world building, his ideas. Uh, his dialogue is, is quite poor. Um, and it's a weird contrast between the two that means you, you're sometimes putting up with an exchange. I would say it, it's not uniformly poor. There are bits in Elric which I thought were quite well written in terms of the exchanges. But on the whole, uh, his issues with being arch come to a head with his his dialogue. But yeah, that will be a priority. Uh, and it has, I guess, Dorian Hawkmoon and a birdman, or I don't know, they're not, I don't think it is Hawkmoon, a couple of animal people riding a gigantic butterfly or something on the little cover so i'm kind of excited to find out what on earth is going on with that those are my priorities then hawk moon and wolf and then to a lesser degree joe abercrombie maybe something else as well maybe uh, neuromancer or red mars neuromancer being william gibson and red mars being kim stanley robinson two big sci-fi reads i want to get done this year so i have some second edition D, D book physical books as a bit of a haul um, that I picked up not just in the last kind of two weeks, uh, in fact over the last couple of months, but lots of these I've read in PDF format before, but I'd really got to the point where I wanted physical copies because I much prefer to run from physical copies, which I suspect most people um, who actually run regularly do. Some people really prefer PDFs. I think most of us probably prefer uh, physical copies, if, particularly if we're running at, at a physical table. But I like them anyway, even if that makes me old-fashioned. So I have quite a few here. We'll go maybe roughly chronological. So, FR1, Waterdeep in the North. This isn't an adventure, but a setting book, though it has adventure ideas. The adventure ideas, actually, in this aren't particularly strong. The city is. Uh, this has a Waterdeep map. It has a variety of sample plans of places you could go. It's got all the kind of stuff you'd expect. Really nice copy. Uh, I think a pretty interesting city supplement. Um, I don't know how I'd compare it. I need to reread it, but to Rock of Bra, which I have reviewed on the channel as a city book. Uh, but uh, it certainly has a lot of good stuff going on. Also by Ed Greenwood, also in Waterdeep, there is, this is Undermountain, or Ruins of Undermountain, in fact. Um, no box, just a, um, uh, a bag, but that actually makes for better storage, ironically. Weird product, really good content, but because TSR wanted three levels uh, of a of a mega dungeon, but they didn't want to give the space to it, much as with some of other of uh, the other Greenwood products they put out, it it's quite slim. It has a weird mixture of material included and excluded. There we are, though. Another Ed Greenwood product, Ruins of Mithranor, another box set. Both of these were on the cheap. Uh, Undermountain, because it was in a bag. Mithranor, it's got a broken box, which I need to take, but also it's a less popular box set. This is, well, the Undermountain and Mithranor were his two early, well, the two really proper campaigns he ever ran, when you uh, look into the history of the games he ran. And uh, Mithranor is a sort of elven ruin with lots of weird magical things going on, very dangerous, bit of a run and gun kind of place. And the box set is is perhaps slightly more functional than Undermountain in terms of not having to add stuff completely, but still, again, requires work on the DM side. What it does have is these little uh, one-sheet dungeon cards, which kind of uh, which you're kind of meant to be able to run as they are. So, for instance, there's Windsong Tower, which has a map, and then pages. Uh, the one-page dungeon was not invented on the internet, you know, circa whenever, uh, circa 2010. Then, right, on to the, well, the later period, late 90s, second edition. Uh, I should say FR1, Waterdeep in the North, is actually first edition, technically. These are all by the same author, and also who I have suggested before, uh, maybe the best adventure designer that, uh, that Dungeons & Dragons has ever had. The controversial claim, I compared him to Gary Gygax, I think they're in the same league. Um, but in terms of sheer volume of high quality work, very few adventure writers have as many high quality works as Bruce Cordell. So I finished off the Suhurgan trilogy. I own book one, Evil Tide. Um, and here is Knight of the Shark. And here is Sea of Blood, both in good editions. Also got his low level adventure. Crazy thing, well, this was about the only generic. Starter adventure ever published for second edition. There were a few 
Forgotten Realms ones particularly, um, as well as other settings, uh, some Planescape stuff, um, some low-level Dark Sun. But the only generic first-level adventure ever published, I think, for second edition from memory, and it's a very good one. Um, it's actually, some would probably go for saying it was one of his best, maybe, uh, if not necessarily his best, one of them. I have volumes two and three of the Illithid trilogy by him, Masters of Eternal Light, Night, and Dawn of the Overmind, which ends up with the spoilers, uh, with the PCs on a ring world trying to stop a plan by mind flayers to use multiversal theory to create a multiverse where the Illithid Empire is in charge and they've been drawing energy from all the suns in the universe to, to fuel this. Uh, so fairly insane gonzo stakes. Um, I don't have the first volume of that, A Darkness Gathering, which is the least well rated, uh, but it's just really expensive. So it's not as well rated and it's much more expensive. So I haven't bought it. Finally, I, and this one I think might be the old, uh, yes, this was the first I got of this batch and this was a few months ago. I do not have a lid. It is another box set with a problem, but it is Return to the Tomb of Horrors, a physical edition by him. You can get a lot of these reprinted now as single volumes, but there are downsides when there, there are lots of handouts involved or separate books where it's useful to be able to open them up. Uh, so this has a uh, main adventure tome. It has a reprint, a facsimile reprint of the original Tomb of Horrors. This is a, a, a module which involves not one, not two, but three versions of the Tomb of Horrors in very different modes, uh, ending up in a place called Moyle, the city that waits. But yeah, there's a map and monsters book, there's an illustration book, and there's handouts. And so there's a lot of stuff which is actually quite useful to be able to separate. And though you can print stuff out via PDF, that would defeat the point of having got the all-in-one physical book printed if that's the main thing you've bought. So those are the RPG products I have gotten lately uh, in the last, as I say, really couple of months. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff there. It's pretty much, for me, all the Cordell books I want. Uh, he also did Die Vecna Die, which was the last second edition adventure, and Reverse Dungeon, which starts well and then stops, well, basically your monsters, which starts well and stops going well pretty quickly. Um, they're both a bit strange. Darkness Gathering, not that bothered by. Already owned Gates of Firestorm, Peak and Evil Tide. And I'm not sure if there's anything else by him from second edition at all, in fact. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've got. Uh, I... Uh, one thing is also I get to run lots of these things. I find opportunities too. They fit into one campaign or another. So it's even where it's not, you know, even where it's grist to the mill, that's useful to buy more books. But when there's also um, a direct purpose for it, uh, where you're like, I can fit that in, that can be a seed in one of my campaigns. And if the players don't take it there, maybe it will happen in another campaign. It, it definitely makes it feel <laughs> uh, less absurd to just buy these adventures anyway what have you been reading what have you been buying uh, and if you're into D, &D what have you been running or playing tell me in the comments and i'll see you next time